Cut it out, you two. You're making me horny. Don't forget my man's out there battling the elements. Well, don't worry about him, Lisa. He's safe in that bar by now. Probably with some nice, hot, blonde country babe. <laughs> Welcome to Hello, This is the Doom Show. I am Richard. Folks, I am Richard, again, still here, forever, talking to Jeffrey. Hello, Jeffrey. I was young, I was pretty, and I could drive a sled better than any of them. (laughs) Hi, Richard. Hello. Hello, Sledster. (laughs) Folks, we are going to talk about The Chill Factor from 1989 and then uh released on vhs not till 93 i think that sounds right it's uh directed by christopher webster or uh krebster as they called him on the set maybe <laughs> i don't think they call uh, that that's what we call him now krebster him the krebster krebster is mostly a producer right he yes. he did some executive producing early on with some uh, some big hits like Hellbound, Hellraiser 2, and wow. Heathers. And uh, my favorite, Meet the Apple Gates. Are you familiar with that one? <laughs> Is that where they're bugs? Um, yes. Okay. Okay. I do <laughs> know that film. <laughs> they're bug people. I've never seen that film. That is that Ed Begley Jr., right? Uh, Ed Bugley Jr. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, folks, we're going to spoil uh, the the chill factor, or as I wrote in my notes, the chilly willy factor. Um, although there's no willies in the movie, I was watching some Christmas cartoons with Lietta, and they had a chilly willy episode, so hmm. got to reference that chilly willy. But yeah, we're going to spoil this thing, and um, I would feel bad if I spoiled this for somebody, because man... This takes some unexpected turns, and it's not just sleds. It zigs and it zags, and it crashes right into a mound of snow. I made an accidental uh, snowmobile double feature. I watched this, then I watched Violent Night. The oh, that's got some it, snowmobile action. It's got some snowmobiles. Sorry for the spoilers. Ah, d- god damn it! <laughs> Never watching it. <laughs> You're like, I was not going to watch it, but now that I know there's snowmobiles. All right, so uh, we're going to jump into this thing. Oh, wait, no, wait. Oh, got to play the trailer for this alternate title, Demon Possessed. Mm. So (laughs) here's the trailer for Chill Factor Demon Possessed from AIP Home Video. Coming soon from AIP Home Video. Demon Possessed. Three college couples take a snowmobiling break. In a remote Northwood location. Ooh, some tough guy. After a drag race ends abruptly in a crash. They search for shelter, finding a boarded up children's camp, once run by a murderous religious order. Keep the beast in the field. When the Bible says the beast, the devil and an innocent game with an ancient Ouija board activates the demonic spirit of the cat which possesses the injured student I told you it wasn't a toy damn you what happened here it could happen again if the killer isn't put away <laughs> one by one the students succumb to the demon's fiendishly original mayhem. (gasps) 
Unleashing the horror of a night of murder. Going to be a cold day in hell. Demon possessed. Coming soon from AIP Home Video. Okay, there's the trailer. I really like that trailer a lot. It's beautiful. I don't like the title Demon Possessed. I mean, is it literal? Mm-hmm. Is it what actually happens in the film? You bet it does. <laughs> But chill, the chill factor is a much better title. Absolutely. Uh, please don't mistake it for the Skeet Ulrich. Is it Skeet Ulrich and Cuba Gooding Jr. movie? Ooh, that's also <laughs> called Chill Factor. I saw another movie kept trying to come up when I searched, and I was like, just ignored it completely. This the Skeet Ulrich one is where they they have to like it's a buddy. They're not cops. Well, one of them might be a cop. I can't remember. Buddy something movie where they they like drive around a refrigerated truck and that's the chill factor. I, I, I've seen it. I don't remember anything. I, I assume that one of them is an Amway salesman. That sounds right. Okay. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I almost forgot the freaking VHS. So of course, AIP Home Video ha- or AIP Studios has uh, the Demon Possessed VHS, which um, I use the internet to find. Ooh, do you wow. have this one <laughs> uh the internet no i don't have that i would like to try that out it sounds neat no i meant the vhs dude i don't have this one on vhs okay. no in fact i this is one i did not know existed until uh arrow video put out the blu-ray which is wow. the easiest way to see this film yeah read this vhs i want to evaluate it's uh how accurate right. it is so this is the the demon possessed uh vhs from aip home video uh and the <laughs> tagline is the fires of hell just got hotter. Colder. <laughs> well, I guess that's not called <laughs> chill factor on this one. So, okay, I, I accept it. An unsuspecting student falls prey to demonic powers and becomes quote unquote possessed when he and his friends stumble on stumble onto a cult murder in the remote Northwoods. One word. <laughs> After Tom is severely injured in a snowmobile race. He and the others must take shelter in a deserted children's camp once run by a secret religious cult. As the long night wears on, an innocent game with a Ouija board, sort of, activates the satanic (laughs) spirit of the camp. Here we go. Tom soon dies, and while thought to be resting, the demon invades, spoiler alert, Tom's body and mysteriously cures him. The quote-unquote fiend now begins his evil treachery. One by one, the quote-unquote campers succumb (laughs) to the demon's power. Only Jenny escapes. However, she is puzzled by the sheriff's comment that the camp had quote-unquote sheltered them. However, she is puzzled by the sheriff's comment that the camp that had quote-unquote sheltered them had actually burned down years ago. Moments later, Jenny also disappears. The last victim. That's the entire movie. <laughs> 97 minutes, which is not accurate. Hi-fi stereo. That's We don't even need to record. They got it all. I, I mean, obviously, I, don't, I didn't understand the ending. I, that's not the ending I noticed. I don't know what the hell happened. But yeah, uh, that's it. Yeah, I didn't know she disappeared. Because she's narrating the whole film. She didn't disappear. Yeah. yeah. She's not a victim. Well, that's strange. All right. Not a terribly, I mean, mostly accurate up until a point. But yeah, you're right. That's not a, that's not a Ouija board. What are they talking about? (laughs) Oh boy. So here comes the whole plot every single second. (laughs) Why did I take so many notes, folks? Somebody help me. (laughs) You know what? Screw the back of that box. Time for the accurate (laughs) plot synopsis. Wikipedia, (laughs) stand, stand aside. The back of the box should just be, uh, some dot matrix paper taped to it with my notes (laughs) that's the dot matrix printer it has to like (laughs) unfold because it's it's so long yeah it's like the uh the demon wind vhs where when you press the button on the demon wind the eyes would light up on this one you you press the button and the plot prints out (laughs) and then it's like that banksy painting it just shreds as it prints out (laughs) It's just like my mind. <laughs> That's me trying to remember shit. 
So we get some inspirational opening music, and I wrote in my notes, I'm the king of the world. Oh my god. So the score is great in this film. It's it's yeah. a it's a MIDI score with some other elements mixed in. Um, but like this opening tune in particular sounds like the overworld map in a particularly mopey Final Fantasy game. Uh, I love it. I wanna I wanna <laughs> I wanna like browse different continents to this song. <laughs> It's AOL online music. Uh, we get some obtuse narration, which is all wonderful. All of the narration in this movie is great. And uh, more importantly than all that crap, we get some snowmobiles. <laughs> uh, uh, there's some uh, slow-mo uh, plunging in the snowmobiles. There's some <laughs> slow-mo love affair. I wrote Titanic structure in my notes. I don't know what that means. Hmm. Titanic hmm. structure. Well, I thought of I, I'm the king of the world because I got Titanic music vibes from maybe, the music. Maybe we were parallel thinking there. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we always do. <laughs> oh, oh, I guess. Okay, I know what I was thinking. So I was thinking that the, the old, uh, which character is it that's the old woman narrating? Uh, it's Jeannie. Jeannie. Yeah, Jeannie's like... 30 years later, that's how long it's been since I last saw Tom. Uh, <laughs> that's that's the structure. It's doing like the same basic thing, yeah. kind of, uh, as the movie Titanic. Yeah, yeah. Well, instead of throwing a jewel into the ocean, uh, she's throwing uh, some mittens into the <laughs> in snow. An, in an eyeball planchette, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we see some uh, snowmobiling gone wrong, as the obtuse narration predicts. Things go south for one uh, snowmobiler, as uh, he goes flying off his snowmobile into a tree. You know, he's a college boy so handsome, I could have died. And he <laughs> is a college boy so reckless, he could have died. <laughs> I like how she says that the year 2000 was just around the corner. <laughs> and I'm like, wait. How? What, are, is this a little ways in the off. future? It's a little ways off. No, <laughs> the year two thousand was a mere decade plus away. <laughs> um, but I loved, I love how she like proceeds and and closes out that line. She goes like, you know. Uh, things were wild back then. Uh, uh, one of my friends was dating a, a somebody's sister. One of my other friends was dating a black girl. You know, it's the year 2000. Maybe we were all a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> she was getting ready for Y2K. And like, I, man, you're dating a black girl. What? <laughs> wild. Whoa. That's the progressive stuff right there, man. <laughs> boy oh boy <laughs> this movie kind of thinks it is for about half an hour yes. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> our gang of friends um who are we're going to introduce um hopefully never they're frolicking with their snowmobiles um the weirdest thing was they painted like red lips on the fronts of their snowmobiles and they were like gently bumping the fronts of their <laughs> snowmobiles to make little smooches <laughs> or is that my secret dream? Uh, so, so you mean one of them was aggressively trying to make out with that tree, <laughs> <laughs> and things went horribly awry. <laughs> uh, they go to the bar. Uh, and there's some sick tunes, or oh, oh, rather, one sick tune uh, that gets reprised later <laughs> at the end of the, the uh, closing credits. All right, so I have to admit, the movie peaks here at the bar for me. It, it's kind of all downhill after this, um, like downhill s sledding. Right, um, right. I, I love Bessie, the owner of this bar. Oh, my God. Her, she's wearing this great trucker hat that says, I make shit happen, um, which is also like the Arby's slogan for a little while, I think. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, Arby's was, we, we're going to make you shit. They were a little bit more blunt about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, we our our gang arrives uh, to this bar, and of course, there's uh, some tough guys at the bar who have been drinking a lot, and they immediately, immediately are racist to uh, the the black girl who's a uh, Lisa or excuse me, Lissa. I have like three different names for her, so if I call out different shit, I apologize because. Um, I was paying attention, but there's moments in this movie where if you're trying to take notes, your brain shuts down and you don't know what you're writing. You just keep writing. 
I'll be honest. The only character name I wrote down was Bessie. Uh, <laughs> I'm spent at Bessie. <laughs> you were smarter than me. Uh, yeah. So th- this bar scene is great for a lot of reasons. Uh, largely not for like the racism, though. Again, the movie does sort of plan itself on the side of uh, Lissa is cool. All these yes. people at the bar suck which yes. is nice. She has this great line at one point where she says, what, you scared of a little black pussycat like me? Uh, to the drunk men at the bar. Um, my favorite, so this is one of those great texture scenes where we're just plunged into the world and we get to see like meaningless stuff that just fills me with joy. Um, this is like the sort of stuff that like the shock marathons guys like, right? You know, it's that yeah, stuff yeah. that is not consequential to the horror components, but it is just, it makes you feel good, right? And in this okay. case, it makes you feel bad because like we see, we see this long shot of Bessie filling up a bunch of mugs full of beer. Uh, I love this. And, and uh, uh, like, there's just, there's the head of the beer just foaming over on the sides, but then it pans up from that to all the people who are about to receive these beers. And they look like they want to die. Like they've just been at this bar their entire lives. Their lives are not getting any better and they can't, they can't wait to just continue it tomorrow. Which is why they strike out at anything different that comes into the bar so that you know they they've literally never seen a black person before so they're going to be horrible racists because you know they're they've been probably inbreeding for years it's fine is this movie a commentary on american society is it in fact ahead of its time yes i can answer that with mostly just hesitation in front of it Uh, but yeah, so they're mean to the black girl, uh, our pal Lissa, and they say the N-word, which is never welcome. And uh, then uh, her boyfriend, who, his name is Ronnie, but I wrote down in my notes, Hi, I'm Chip Burbowski. <laughs> I have no idea where Burbowski came from. <laughs> my name is Chip Burbowski. I would love a Burberidge. <laughs> Um, and yes, he, uh, Mr. Chip, whose name is Ronnie, he, I wrote in my notes that he fudges these guys up in the, the shortest fight scene ever. <laughs> um, he catches the one dude's fist and then kind of like the one dude goes to pull a knife out of his pocket and he just crunches the guy's hand before it even gets out of his pocket. And the dude's hand just comes out all bloody and cut up. And then they're thrown punch. out of the bar and I feel better about them being thrown out. And Bessie's like, hi, I'm not a wait. I'm not a racist. I'm a waitress. <laughs> I oh, love Bessie. you kids. Gosh, she really does. She takes to them immediately. She's like, let me tell you about, did she tell them about the cabin? Yeah. No, she tells them about a, about maybe where they can go, they, where they can go snowmobiling. Yeah, they can do some racing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so we got Dr. Chris. Um, he's a character. He's one of the kids here. Uh, he immediately proposes to Bessie. And um, she, like, gives them a round of drinks on the house, partly for, like, kicking those guys' asses, but also for that proposal. So if you go out drinking and you don't want to pay your tab, just, like, propose marriage to literally <laughs> whoever married. serves you. Yeah, because uh, the beers are, are basically her dowry. Yes. Uh, that, that is now shared with you. <laughs> They introduce everybody. The characters all get introduced by name. And I wrote in my notes, everyone gets introduced here. And my brain has already shut down because there's so much happening in this opening bit. Like, this is great. A scene like this is actually uh, like a real true benefit to us as podcasters. I did not take note of it. (laughs) I I just moved right past it. I did note that one of them was a doctor. That's about it. All of their names are Charlie because they're some good time Charlies. They are some good. Before shit gets (laughs) real. Before shit gets real. So um, Tom, who's one of the guys here, um, he's he's like waving his dick around uh, with Chris. Uh, who's also waving his dick around because they want to have a frozen lake sledding. They want to have a freaking snowmobile race. But Jeannie's scared because she's had visions that we saw at the beginning of this movie where something's going to go wrong at this race. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, her vision was exact. So she could have warned them, perhaps. But she even says later, like, I didn't know how to put it into words. And I'm like, <laughs> you can't describe like images, dude. <laughs> 
<laughs> can't describe uh uh is 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 the person who gets hit her boyfriend yes yeah okay so you can't yes. describe your boyfriend like <laughs> just smashing his skull into a tree that one a uh, little bit beyond your uh, uh verbal abilities yes um so so chip burbowski aka ronnie aka chip jock i wrote in my notes he even makes in this moment he makes a weird racial aspersion towards <laughs> his own girlfriend here and i was like mm, i mean no where I think he says, like, you're the only black girl who can't sing. He, this exact line is, Ugh, I'm in love with the only black girl who sings off key. Man, just, you know, if you have a thought like that, don't. first of all, don't say it out loud. Second of all, go get, like, a therapist or something. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, your therapist is a, a it's a tree in the woods that Run you bang your head up against fast it. as you can. Yes, yes. There's one other line of so this is my because this is my favorite scene. It's the scene I have the most to say about. There's one other. <laughs> there's one other great line in it. Um, it's when uh, uh, one of the boys is disarming the uh, the drunken sad sacks. It's it's right after uh, the guy tries to take out his knife and he gets his hand crunched. Uh, our boy says, you shouldn't play with sharp toys, ratso. <laughs> I'm really glad you caught that. That's good. <laughs> uh, so they find out about, from Bessie, they find out about Blackfriar Lake. And um, I wrote in my notes, this race is going to be dope as hell, y'all. Uh, but before we can leave the bar, there's some weird tension where um, I wrote in my notes... Tom is sort of touching Karen's butt at the bar and everyone looks upset about it. And I'm like, wait, Tom is like her brother. Yeah. So I don't know if it was Tom, but somebody was touching her butt and they were all like staring like angrily at the bar. And and I'm wondering if that was the maybe the first hint of the incest we're going to have later. Oh, boy. I don't know. I don't know. I will have to revisit this movie because, yeah. <laughs> this movie has layers. Layers that we we did not necessarily fully pick up on. <laughs> uh, so Jeannie again gives a non-warning about the whole, the tragedy, the impending tragedy. And since she's not giving them a warning, they fucking ignore her and go out for the race anyway. And sure enough, uh, Tommy immediately goes flying <laughs> through the air and has a horrific head injury. Uh, uh, the doctor, our doctor boy, says uh, when they go to examine him, he's like, okay, the head wound looks bad. However. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So so instead of going back where they from whence they came, they decide to risk it all and go into the unknown and just go looking for shelter randomly. Because, you know, our pal Tom here, he's, he has... He's in shock, so they need to get him warm. So they just take a chance and go off to find shelter. And they find an abandoned, and I wrote in my notes, church <laughs> or camp. And the reason I'm confused is because it has a big old cross at the top of it. You bet. So you, you're walking around the woods. You see a snow-covered hut with a handcrafted. This isn't even professional. This is a handcrafted <laughs> crucifix on top. Are you knocking on that door? <laughs> I'm like... Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey, lady. <laughs> Ding dong, MTV calling. That's Show my, us uh... your crib. Oh, oh I'm, I'm going older than cribs. That was when uh, uh, you could win a contest to have MTV film at your house. It was like for a block party. Oh. So it was like if you lived in a cul-de-sac, MTV would like come and destroy it <laughs> for your, your neighbors. <laughs> They were they were biased only towards cul-de-sacs. Which makes me think of when Married with Children, they won the contest to have Anthrax, the band, not Anthrax, the Anthrax, <laughs> to come to their house. And of course, Anthrax trashes the Bundy's house, which was a favorite episode of mine. Ugh, Good anthrax. stuff. Oh my God. Ding dong, MTV calling. Karen is there with, uh, with good old Ronnie. And, or somebody who knows and they're peeking through the windows that are all boarded up and she immediately sees not just a homemade crucifix it, she sees a nice crucifix with jesus on it totally upside down and i'm like bye just <laughs> as much as i'm curious i also want to live 
I wrote in my notes, that's probably bad. <laughs> they go exploring inside this place and uh, they find the office of the dead animals. <laughs> Worth. Yeah, uh, we enter into the cabin from Evil Dead 2 here. Yes. Which is never a good sign. <laughs> um, so th- so they agree this is a great place to take shelter. Uh, they bring Tom inside and, okay, let the arguing over his condition commence. Oh my god. Man, they are arguing. There's so many things going on. They're just talking over each other. Um, my favorite was a Dr. Marcus Welby reference that I was like, whoa, that's a deep cut right there. I Good don't even job. know what that's a reference uh, to. That's a TV show from the early 70s. late I think late 60s, early 70s called Dr. Welby, Dr. Marcus Welby, MD. And uh, how anyone in 1989 would remember it is a miracle. And the fact that I know what it is is even weirder. <laughs> Listen, these are children of the new millennium. They should not be remembering this. <laughs> they should be they should be on bear share trying to get some tunes, bro. Uh, so yeah, this place is spooky, but they build a nice cozy fire. And uh, there's some fun talk about um, uh, Lissa and the others being creeped out. And uh, she's like, I was brought up Baptist and this shit scares me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see, so Tom is really fucked up. He's got like a, his hand is broken with the bone sticking out of it. His skull is his skull. His uh, his head is all ripped up, and this gives the chance for the girls to uh, argue some more, <laughs> which is kind of the meat and potatoes of this movie for the first hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so Jeannie is like, I don't like this place. She says it's a dark place now, and all I could think about. Of course, was Garth Morang. Dark place, dark place. <laughs> oh my god, I love that show. Anyway, they, they're snooping for food, which is amazing. I kept like hoping they'd find like some MREs or some Ooh. some old cans of SpaghettiOs or something. I was mm. I was like weirdly disappointed they couldn't find food. Yeah, they need some good <laughs> cabin beans. <laughs> that would spice things up right there. <laughs> uh, so Ronnie's gonna go for help. Which is, uh, it's great. Uh, good old Chip Burbowski. He has an amazing line when, uh, I think Lissa is like, you're going to get lost out there. And he's like, football players don't get lost, honey. They know where the end zone is. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable that that is something somebody wrote and somebody said it. I mean, I it doesn't it. even, it doesn't make any sense. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Because the end zone is, is help. The end zone should be back with your friends. You don't right. run for, to back from the, it doesn't make any sense. Then, no, no, it doesn't. Uh, we got a nice little montage of Ronnie uh, on his snowmobile with some sick licks from a guitar. Some <laughs> meow, 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 meow. <laughs> So so Tommy starts to recover slowly. At least we we've confirmed that he's alive. So he's like <laughs> squeezing uh, Genie's fingers. And I wrote in my notes, Lissa gets some toe action. Uh, she, she's ho- ooh, she's holding his big toe and says, "Tommy, try to move your toe." And it's like, "Oh, he moved his toe." And I'm like, "Why am I writing this down?" <laughs> they keep showing this bust of Jesus that's on the wall. And uh, it is really, really not impressed with any of the shit that's going on. <laughs> it looks very morose. He's just, he's just, he's so meh. He's so well, meh. Do I have the bar for this Jesus bust? He can go be among friends. <laughs> Karen is doing some snooping and she finds an old photo with a bunch of the kids who used to like go to this camp. And um, I think it's Lissa. Who says, they must all be middle-aged fatties by now. (laughs) Which, dude on a stick, feels like, weirdly, like a line out of a YA horror novel. Like, (laughs) it might just be because I've been reading some YA horror from the 90s, but man, that, this, in fact, this whole movie feels like a freaking YA horror novel, but a little sexier. Yeah, we we got the sexy scene. We we got a couple sexy scenes. I think that the sexiest is a uh, is a wound care scene that's uh, around <laughs> this time. Oh boy! Um, the weirdest thing here is that uh, the slogan for the school underneath the picture of the kids it says 
keep the beast in the field <laughs> on a little flag underneath them. And I'm like, they're all kind of debating, like, what does that mean? <laughs> the slogan here is hail Satan. What? <laughs> I don't understand. What does that mean? You know, in the Bible, the beast is Satan. It's like, holy shit. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you. <laughs> There, yeah, there is no explanation for what keep the beast in the field means, but I'm fine with that because it, it's pretty evocative. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a beautiful. little bit more evocative than I think this film maybe even earns. Um, <laughs> like that it's, almost sounds like a folk horror type. Like out of uh, the witch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's not quite where we're, what we're going to Would, get. Wouldst thou, wouldst thou like to live snowmobile <laughs> <laughs> Jeannie's talking about how her mom was a tarot card reader. And that uh, her her mom predicting people's futures scared her, and then they uh, they find the satanic wheel of fortune, which is they keep calling it a Ouija board, but they confirm it's not a Ouija board. It is a wheel of fate. It's got a little uh, eyeball in the center on the the planchette, as as Jeffrey used that word. I'm gonna I'm gonna use that word too. I love planchette. Planchette. And it's got all kinds of words written on it, um, but uh, Lissa's like, oh man. My granny had one of these things. Her and her cronies used to use theirs all the time. It's like, ooh, did it tell the future? I don't know. They were drunk. They were passing the bottle around and seeing their dead husbands and stuff. I want to hang out with Lissa's granny and, and crones. Oh, my God. So while uh, Jeannie, Jeannie is expressing this, like, this scaredness that she has, <laughs> their pal Dr. Chris asks her, Jeannie, what is it about this game that's scary? Put it into words I can understand. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. Like, that's the whole problem with Jeannie, dude. She's not putting things into words anyone can understand. Oh, they're blaming her for a little too much. I'm sorry. Well, I feel like the level of comprehension uh, with this group is probably pretty low. And there's only only so many ways that she can say ooga. <laughs> Um, so they start ouija even, even though, even though they, they, she says, please don't. And, but then she, in her narration, old genie is like, oh, but they were my friends and they were all smarter than me. So maybe I should just trust them. That was a big mistake. That's so cute. She knows exactly how I feel around my friends. Oh, God, everyone's smarter than me. Um, so while they're doing this, the wind starts blowing uh, literal tears of blood are crying <laughs> out of Jesus's eyes, and uh, Tom's eyes are fluttering. He starts having a freaking uh, a seizure. But then uh, we see Ronnie uh, res- rescue Ronnie or Chip Burbowski. He's out on his freaking snowmobile, flying through the snow. He doesn't see the barbed wire coming. Oh no! Barbed wire, and he hits it, and it freaking slashes his throat, and he dies. And after this, Tom is. <gasps> Suddenly awake, and his fever is broken. His toes are uh, tingling. <laughs> I just, I just made a little motion of toes at the camera for the people who can't see me. Now that Tom is awake, shit starts getting really inappropriate and strange. Um, Chris is really relieved that Tom is awake and is lucid, and he immediately starts starts making out with Karen in front of everybody, and they're like, uh, "We need to be alone." And someone actually says, what's the matter, Tom? You jealous? It's like, well, that's his sister. <laughs> so please don't. Please don't do that. But then also watching the two of them make out, Lissa says, now I'm getting horny. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. This movie just went from not very sexy at all to way, way overly sexy out of nowhere. You know, it's like a, it's like a virus horniness. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we see Chris and Karen making the sex act. Mm-hmm. And then uh, while this is happening, horny Lissa goes snooping and uh, she finds a letter about a girl named Rebecca from some parents of people that went to this school and they're talking about a tragedy that happened I mean, they name drop Bessie. They actually say one of the kids named Bessie said this. And I'm like, oh, there's that connection. Maybe Bessie did know this place was up here and she was steering them into death. And don't worry, folks, this will not come up again. No, forget it. And she finds out that 
uh, quote unquote, the killer was never caught. Uh, so she finds a, a newspaper and she's got the facts of the case. She's got that news, that handy dandy newspaper. She's going to go show her buds that, hey, this place is fucked up. But then a shadowy figure is following her in a cloak. And this shadowy figure has telekinesis. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. And Liz is, Liz is trying to get back to where she's going. But the, uh, the this mysterious shadow is flinging like, dishes at her in the freaking kitchen. <laughs> so she goes into the freezer. And not very dramatically either. It's just, it's kind no. of like a, a like, uh, 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 uh. Exactly. So did you check out any of the footage on the, the Blu-ray of the, no. the work print? Oh, no. So there's, on the Blu-ray, the arrow, there's a work print of this without any music. Mm-hmm. And it's not much different. Like, it's almost as non, like, not exciting as this. Uh, Lissa goes into the freezer, thinking she'll be safe in there. But the shadowy figure makes the fan blade, this mega metal giant fan, like something you'd see on the back of like a freaking pontoon boat or like, a, like a, an airboat, starts to fall from the ceiling and spinning and spinning. And we see her scream and a big chunky blood flying all over the place. Uh, we, we never get to see what happened to her in detail. Yeah, she just kind of gets turned into blood. Mm-hmm. The, I was really hoping the makeup effects guy, because there's an interview with him <clears throat> on the disc, and I was really hoping he's going to talk about why there's no, there's just no money for like a, a big gore set piece here. Um, but he did talk about one thing that was really funny. <laughs> he put he put blood all over um, the actor who plays Tommy's face, and this blood is safe, but not very safe. Oh, so. No. It, it's okay for this blood to freeze, but if it melts, it's going to get in your eyes and, like, sting your eyes really badly. And this happened where the actor was like, I'm freezing out here. So they put blankets all over him. They got them all warmed up, and the blood unfroze and then went right into his eyes. And it hurt so bad, he couldn't work for two days. Jesus. And the dude, uh, he was he's, he fully owned up to it. He's like, hey, I, I didn't know that was going to happen. It was unforeseen. And that might be why they never called me back to be a, a, an effects guy for this company anymore. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, good guess. Oh. But this is the guy who worked on all kinds of fucking horror movies. I was like, man, I'm sorry, dude. That sucks. Wow. I'm glad you didn't, like, blind that dude. Yeah, I mean, they really, I was, you know, I, I as ever, I'm watching the film as we're talking, and uh, yes. they really cake the blood onto Tom's face. Oh, dude, it's uh, all earlier, over. So, oof, that must have hurt. So after she dies, something is up with Tom. Tom seems to be getting a lot better real fast. And uh, when uh, Chris is like, after he's done making the sex act with uh, Karen, like, man, where the hell is Lissa? So he goes and he finds her corpse. Um, he, he gets scared, grabs a knife, but then the shadow menaces him and he bursts out the back door. And as soon as he goes outside, he gets gotten by an ice penis. Oh, I mean, an icicle. Sorry. Icicle. I want to ride my icicle. Anyway, straight into a tree <laughs> or into my eyeball. Chris gets killed. <laughs> and uh, now Tommy is like completely healed. Karen comes to check on Tom, and she wakes up uh, Jeannie, who's been sleeping on his chest for hours, and that gets really incesty again, where it's like, ugh. <laughs> Bow chicka wow wow. Oh, no, not nice. Not No, I don't care for it. Uh, but he, So Tom is being a real douche to his sister, and of course she rightfully storms off. There's a good line somewhere around in here. I think it might be in this scene where I think Tom says, there you go again, talking about me like I'm a goddamn potato. <laughs> that's right around here. That's exactly the moment. <laughs> oh. So after Karen leaves, Tom's like, yo, Jeannie, check out my wounds. And they're all completely healed. Just some scarring. And he says something to the effect of, I knew our family has special blood. I think I deserve a reward now, don't you? Ooh. And of course, this leads to Jeannie and Tom uh, making the sex act. Karen's out there trying to find her freaking man, and uh, she starts hearing the sounds of summer fun camp times while she's in the little uh, 
sporting goods, uh, sporting goods store. I don't know the sports storage area. She gets gotten by a freaking volleyball net, which is how I want to go. <laughs> she gets hung. It's very sad. I miss her already. And this is when the movie goes completely apeshit. Like, okay, we get that Tom is not Tom. He is now possessed. He's been possessed for a while now, which is why he's being such a creepo. Or that's just how he was in life. I don't know. We haven't spent much time with him. But as he's making sweet love sex act with Jeannie, we see a ghostly Lissa walking out of the uh, the freezer in this ethereal light. And she takes off her top and you you kind of like get this impression that he's making love to her ghost? Question mark. And now Karen, who we just saw die, she's alive and she's creepily smiling. And as uh, Tom is having sex with Jeannie, she turns into his sister. And it's like, what? (laughs) And of course, he has like every uh, possessed person. He has creepy long fingernails. (laughs) Yeah, there's there's some great uh, sex drums playing over this sequence. Um, uh, I, I wrote in my notes, uh, Rosemary's preemie. <laughs> the next morning, the music is, uh, playing as, as our, our pal Jeannie's, uh, looking for everybody trying to figure out what's going on. The music plays a little variation on the three blind mice. <laughs> and I was like, sure. That's a, that's something they should put in this music. I get you. I get you. What's more menacing than three blind mice played slowly. <laughs> On MIDI. Anything in the public domain is scary, Jeffrey. <laughs> so so she finds the bodies, and then she sees the the uh, the, the devil's eye turning, 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 and she comes back to the, the this this uh wheel of fortune devil eye thing and she's like, Tom is evil? Is he my Tom? Hello? And the uh it actually says on this uh, Ouija board thing, it says big no, no ma'am. Jeannie goes outside to try to escape. She's like, she's like taking in the advice of this freaking Ouija board, getting the fuck out of there. Good for her. Uh, but she peeks in the window on her way out and she sees Tom in a cloak looking at all the camp stuff. Looks like he's reminiscing of days gone by and he turns to smile at her. And I will give this actor credit folks. This dude, Tom, when he's all in this freaking cloak, smiling creepily, legit, creepy like i was like "Mm, i don't like the look of that face (laughs) no sir (laughs) i loved it and then we get the big old uh the big i guess climactic ending here with uh what's that thing what is that Uh, thing that's like a it's like a mobile it's a snow a sled yeah someone actually took i looked at the the one star review of this movie and they didn't like the racist stuff which hey i get you (laughs) <laughs> but they 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 were really mad that they kept calling the snowmobiles sleds. Like the reviewers, like these people are ignorant. <laughs> ignorant. I I figured it was just like a regional thing. Like oh, we just call them sleds here, and we call sleds trash cans. I don't know. <laughs> In Florida, we call them what are those? Anyway. Uh, so she gets away on the uh, on the uh, snowmobile, but not before sh- her shoulder gets scratched, which I thought would be important. It's not um, by by Mr. Claus, her her freaking boyfriend. She speeds away. She gets all the way to Blackfriar Lake, but then <gasps> Tom is there. Zombie Tom, the dead body of her boyfriend. It's been there the whole time. Ay, 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 Doesn't make sense. And he. It takes the snowmobile, which has been upright against the tree, and he pushes it over and gets it on its freaking wheels again, and, and its little skis. We got a big old chase. We got a big old snowmobile chase. Uh, the, the music here turns into a... Uh, we go from the overworld map to the battle theme <laughs> in a Final Fantasy game. Uh, very exciting. My, yeah, my... you can see... Who could see her hit points on the in a little bar on the bottom of the screen here? Yeah, <laughs> she's it's not looking good. <laughs> so my favorite moment in this whole chase is they get to where Ronnie Chip Brabowski has fucking died. They stop both snowmobiles who have been chasing each other. Stop, and Tom Zombie Tom points at the body of Ronnie, 
and then they drive on. He's like, in case you missed it, your friend is fucking dead. <laughs> Are you scared yet? <laughs> I, I, have, I can't believe I saw this scene. I can't even believe I witnessed that part. It was fucking amazing. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so now the most complicated shit of all time um, <laughs> happens where... I'm going to try to describe this in one sentence. <laughs> Zombie Tom crashes his snowmobile and then a hilarious regional character driving one of those cat <laughs> snowplow things with the tank treads runs over his body while hilariously watching it happen, unable to step on the brakes, just watching the body go under the wheels and crushes our pal Tom, Zombie Tom, to death. This is like the serious version of the scene near the end of Austin Powers, where Austin Powers <laughs> runs over Michael McDonald <laughs> so slowly. It's at like the same speed. <laughs> and then and then the, his snowmobile explodes and we get to see the fire stunts and the fire effect of Zombie Tom, his, his helmet and just his flesh melting. It's actually pretty good. I like mm -hmm. that part. It looks disgusting. And it, mainly it's the plastic melting. I think it smells bad. Yeah. So then the, this cop shows up out of nowhere. He's like, hey, what the fuck's going on here? And instead of talking to the cops, Jeannie says, quote, fuck this noise. I ain't got time for this shit. And she leaves. And her, her good old creepy narration begins again. In this creepy narration, or cryptic narration, she reveals that she was drawn back to that place to that camp she was drawn back there and when she went back there she found out it had burned down 20 years ago which means they weren't even there they were never there dude or they were but they were hallucinating the actual enclosure yes that's actually spooky it's cool i like that a lot hey there you go um, and it ends with that jamming tune, that beautiful freaking song about the, like the the hick snowmobile song or whatever the fuck it is. It's where the real world ended and the dark world began. Since my baby up and left me, I've been sitting alone with the television on. TV dinners waiting by. Folks, let's talk a little bit about this crew here. Mm -hmm. um, good old Christopher Webster uh, was a producer mainly. Whoa, he produced Dead Girl from 2008. That's interesting. Wow. He also, he, he produced and uh, well, kind of co-wrote. He provided the story for Children of the Night. Are you oh familiar with this one? Dude on a stick. Dude, I love children of the night this was one i watched very recently and because mm. i was like wait a minute that sounds great it has the dude from freaking uh his uh what is his name dom de kid is in it <laughs> peter de yeah, yeah from from the midnight hour and i was like let's do this and i fell in love with it a children of the night is like why aren't more people talking about that shit that was a fangoria movie when fangoria is like hey we're a movie studio now we're gonna make <laughs> some hit fucking movies for cheap here's children of the night Oh, Oops. and it did terrible. How do you like that one? I fucking love um, it. I have it. I own it on VHS. I have not watched it yet. Oh, I, think, um, but I really I have think heard... you're in for a treat. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, with a cast like Peter DeLuise, Karen Black, and Amy Dolan's, I am in. <laughs> and freaking little little Dom, little Dommy. I <laughs> say so he also produced uh, freaking uh, Trapped Alive, which uh, I was like, hey Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, did you have you seen Trapped Alive? What'd you think? And you're like, I've seen it, can't remember. <laughs> I remember that somebody gets trapped alive um, <laughs> with a bad guy who may not be all that bad. I I don't remember. It's supposedly a Christmas. It's got Christmas in it, so we'll probably watch mm -hmm. it this year. Okay, <laughs> Fire, fired up for some Christmassy viewing. Uh, he was an executive producer on Hellbound, Hellraiser Two, as you mentioned. Um, He's also an executive producer on Heather's. What? Yeah. Uh, but this is his only directorial credit. But according to, oh my God, what was it? The casting director or the production designer in the movie? 
uh, on the disc they interview her and she's like he loved horror movies he loved horror movies and would he'd be making horror movies right now <laughs> is he passed away who can say who knows she she did talk about him in the past tense so i'm thinking either he wasn't speaking to her or he had passed away i'm not sure <laughs> this is a real easy cast to talk about because uh well they've only starred in this movie <laughs> yeah uh barbara clamen or clayman who did the voice of old genie uh she passed away in 2019 uh, but she was a big time casting director uh like casting director for like shit you've heard of like the changeling <laughs> yeah and her ver- the very first movie she did casting for was mark of the witch which i know is one that you Holy like too shit yeah that's a good one that just blew the top of my head off man mark of the witch is great <laughs> wait, wait wait she did mark of the witch and then went on eight years later to be a casting assistant for days of heaven that's wild more importantly she was a casting director on grizzly 2 <laughs> <laughs> whoa <laughs> Have you all right? Have you seen Grizzly too? No, I, I've heard um, mixed things about. Hey, should I check this out? And people were like, um, and then other people were like, you need to see this. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, absolutely, one hundred percent. You should see it. Okay. It's great, even gotcha. in the unfinished form. It is wonderful because there's a lot of finished footage in it, and then the new footage is hilarious, and the weird CGI they put in it also hilarious. <laughs> but okay. there's also just a lot of music performances which are so good. You'll like learn about some uh, like European girl groups who you've never heard of before. Oh, uh, I'll say that I, I watched the film and immediately bought every piece of vinyl I could find from one of the groups in the movie. <laughs> well, you're selling me, dude. I will watch that. I'll put that on my two watch list. That sounds freaking great. So yeah, the, you know, this, this writer, uh, Julian Weaver, uh, he also wrote, uh, trapped alive and something called the inheritor. Mm. I do like AIP home video, or as I call it, AIP home video. Uh, they distribute the most important thing that they came up with, of course, was elves. Yes. Which I hope by the time we put this episode out, dude, there's a damn Blu-ray of elves. <sighs> I mean, what one would hope? What is have? Does I think everyone? To, I'm guessing if if you don't have the tape yourself, that you have the same VHS rip that everybody else has with the tracking problems. No, I have the tape. See, Jeffrey, he, he's, he's coming correct. He's got the freaking tape. And I didn't spend a ton of money for it. I bought this tape decades, well, not decades, like 15 years ago at my uh, old video store. Right. Uh, they had, you know, a copy for sale. I remember they had that and a, I think it was the pilot episode of Street Hawk. And I was like, Ooh. I need both of these things. <laughs> Um, but so uh, Terror Vision, uh, which is a, a largely a record label, recently put out the score for Elves. Wow. And I'm hoping because they've branched out into uh, releasing Blu-rays, like they just put out a Blu-ray of Santa Claus, uh, 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 nice. the, you know, with the C A C L A W S Santa with, uh, Claus, with, uh, with the John Russo face? movie, um, yeah. Debbie Roshan. Yeah, and they like yeah. they did a full like scan of that movie from the original elements. Mm. Uh, so I'm hoping that because they've got like a relationship with the rights holders, that maybe they can put it out. Oh, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, AIP also put out something called Terror Eyes from 1989 that looks fantastic. I'm just going by the the, the artwork. Is this freaking brilliant? Mm. Uh, but yeah, they put out a lot of uh, cheap budgeted action movies. You bet. Like tons and tons of this stuff, like Striker and Lock and Night Load. Night of the Kick Fighters. Oh, my favorite is Robo Chick, and Chick C H I C is an acronym for something. I'm not going to click any farther. Uh, but they put out something called Raw Nerve with Tracy Lords and uh, Jan Michael Vincent. <laughs> they put out Soul Taker and oh yeah, something called War Zone, Undercover Cop. Um, the one I found that I think was AIP. Let me make sure. I went down a rabbit hole uh, looking up movies that weren't uh, Chill Factor, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I found something called Alien Seed. Oh, 
Um, and it is on YouTube. I hope it's still on YouTube when we put this episode out. And oh my lord, it looks so good. The trailer is awesome for Alien Seed 1989. Folks, look for that shit. I don't know. I haven't seen it, but I'm saying I'm intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> look for it. <laughs> look for it. So yeah, that's it for... I mean, I, there is a great amount of extras on the disc. And as usual, I am terrible. I watched three minutes of these extras and then I bail. So I kind of <laughs> didn't learn anything. But folks, if you watch Demon Possessed a.k.a. the Chili Willy Factor, you can learn stuff. But, uh, Jeffrey, I want to know. I want to know. How do you like the Chill Factor? Well, how do I feel about the Chill Factor? I feel great. Uh, <laughs> what a great film. Um, it's nice and breezy. Gets gets you in and out real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, you barely warmed your seat up and you're done. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it, it's, it, I don't understand it at all. Um, mm. it, it does get a little bit dull, I guess, you know, um, in sort of like the middle portion where they're largely just squabbling and uh, getting increasingly horny. But once they reach like peak horniness, they're like twirling around in circles as ghosts. Um, they're doing their their Rosemary's Baby sex drums. Everything <laughs> is up from there. So it's got like a real good beginning, real solid end, and like a kind of sleepy middle. But that's great because maybe yeah. I want to take a nap during the middle anyway. <laughs> and wake up, wake up for the fun stuff. You're like, I got shit to do out later. I got to get some sleep. <laughs> How do you like this one, Richard? I, uh, I really enjoyed it. This was one that I didn't like as much until after it was over and immediately as the, that song came back on that <laughs> that twanging guitar country jamboree song came on i was like i really liked this um it reminded me of the sleepiness of ghost keeper yeah for which sure. uh perfect pairing this and ghost keeper um there's lots of fun dialogue we could have quoted all this shit like i feel like the more i go back and kind of sort through the scenes where people are arguing it's going to be wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a quiet movie. Maybe a little too quiet at times. The baffling plot shit is very funny. I wanted more of the cult stuff. I wanted more characters. Um, I really wanted Bessie and the townspeople to show up in cloaks. Ooh, yeah, they're and in like, on it. We've been waiting for you, master. That would have been <laughs> fucking dope as shit. But that would have been a more satisfying movie. And then people would re have remembered this fucking How nonsense. How dare you call us middle-aged fatties. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the whole vibe is great. Um, to a lesser extent, it also reminded me of Screams of a Winter Night. Uh -huh. Just, you know, like, but I, you know, this, this is just fun stuff. Um, and like you said, breezy, 85 minutes uh, padded out with snow, snow mobiling. <laughs> <laughs> which who doesn't love snowmobiling <laughs> yeah dude no that was we did it we talked about freaking chill factor cranking the chill factor up to frosty you see if spasmo wants the uh freaking cameo in the show spasmo <laughs> spasmo she did that thing where she's talking but she gets bored and starts meow yawning in the middle of talking <laughs> beautiful yeah. This is just for Jeffrey because Jeffrey's watching the video. Smash my. a baby. She's a little more squirrely than Gorgon. Oh, yeah. You want to get out of here? Okay. She's like, no, I'm staying. Fuck you. Squirrely. All right, I'm going to stop recording because I guess we did. <laughs> we did it. Hey, w wouldn't be a doom show if I wasn't distracted by my own cats. <laughs> Meow. Bye, folks. Folks, thanks so much for listening to this episode. If you'd like to write into the show, send an email to doomedmoviethon at gmail, or hit us up at doomedmoviethon on Instagram, or at doomedmoviethon on Twitter, or at doomedmoviethon at Discord, or go to Hello This Is The Doomed Show on Facebook and message us there. If you want more Hello This Is The Doomed Show, Go to doomedmoviethon.com and click the podcast button for the archive. Or go to YouTube and look up Doomed Moviethon and you'll find 
the classic episodes of Hello, This is the Doomed Show. And if that's still not enough, um, I have written some books, you know, about my love of movies over on Amazon.com. Uh, just look up Richard Glenn Schmidt and you'll find Giallo Meltdown, a movie-thon diary, Giallo Meltdown 2, Cinema Somnambulist,